Hey there, I'm Benjamin from Love Starter. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with Looker Studio. This is my Looker Studio tutorial for beginners. We're going to cover the steps you need to follow to create your very first report. We'll look at how to connect a data source. We'll explore the different ways we can visualize our data for our reports and dashboards. And we'll also look at how we can begin to customize and style our reports. Okay, so Looker Studio, previously called Google Data Studio, lets you present data using a range of visualization options. You can use it to create dashboards, multi-page reports, and more. Let's head to Looker Studio. You can find Looker Studio by heading to lookerstudio.google.com. And here we can see that we're presented with some templates at the top, along with recent reports and dashboards we've created. You can also connect different data sources to build your dashboards and reports. Today we're going to connect Google Analytics, but as we'll see, there are different options you can use depending on the data you want to use. Okay, let's click Create. We can see there are options to create a report, a data source, and an explorer. Let's select the option to create a report. The first thing we need to do is add a data source to our report. To do this, we need to use a connector. This is simply the way we get data into our report. We can see that all of the Google connectors are listed first. This includes the connectors for Google Analytics, Google Ads, Google Sheets, and more. Scrolling down, you can find connectors from other partners. This includes a range of connectors from Supermetrics and other third parties. You can use these if there isn't a Google connector available. For example, if you wanted to include data from Facebook or LinkedIn, you'd need to use one of these connectors since Google doesn't provide inbuilt connectors for these platforms. You can search for connectors and you can also select My Data Sources to use data sources that you've previously connected to other reports. I'm going to select Google Analytics as the connector for this report. We can then select the Google Analytics account and the property we want to use for the report. Today we're going to use Google's GA4 Google Analytics 4 demo property, but of course you should use your own Google Analytics property or other data source when you create your report. Once we're happy, we just need to click Add and then Add to Report. We can see that a table is automatically added to our report, and we're looking at the report canvas, which is where we build our report. Across the top, we have a range of options. For example, we can select Insert or Add a Chart to add visualizations to our report. This includes time series charts, column charts, combo charts, pie charts, tables, bubble maps, field maps, heat maps, line maps, Geo charts, scorecards, scatter charts, bullet charts, stacked area charts, pivot tables, tree maps, and gauges. Since the table is selected, we can modify this chart using the panel on the right hand side. We can see there are two columns. The first column lets us adjust the visualization. This is where we can change the dimensions and metrics presented in the chart and change the style of the chart. And the second column shows us all of the fields that are available for the data source. So this lets us view all of the available dimensions and metrics we can use. Okay, so we're going to create a dashboard that shows us how people are finding our website. We're going to include various elements from the Google Analytics acquisition reports. Let's start by changing the dimension from event name so we can see our marketing channels. To do this, we can click on the current dimension and then search for Session Default Channel Grouping and select our new dimension. We can then see the table updates. Now let's change the metric that's presented in the table. Let's select Views and change this to Sessions. And now let's add another metric to our report. We can either pull a metric from the column on the right, or we can click Add Metric, and then search for the metric we want to add. 
I'm going to search for engagement rate and add this to the chart. We can now see the table shows us the different marketing channels sending people to our website, the number of sessions for each channel and the engagement rate. This lets us quickly see our most important marketing channels and if people are actually engaging with our website and content. Now let's customise how the metrics are presented. To do this we need to make sure we have the chart selected. And then we need to select the Style tab. You'll find a range of options for customising your chart. For example, I want to customise the way the metrics are displayed, so I'm going to scroll down and look for Column 1. Then I'm going to select Number and change this to Bar. We can see our chart updates to show a visual comparison for the metric. Now let's select Show Number so that we can see the metric included in the table. We now have a metric along with a simple visualisation. OK, now let's repeat this for the second metric. We need to look for column 2 and then change number to bar. And let's enable show number. That's it. Now we're going to copy this table to present other data in our dashboard. To do this, you can use keyboard shortcuts on your computer or you can select Edit, then Copy, and then Paste. I'm going to modify this table to show all of the referring websites that are sending traffic to our site. To do this, I'm going to change the dimension. Let's select the Setup tab. And now let's select Session Default Channel Grouping and change this to Session Source. Now we can see that this does include some referring sites, but it also includes other traffic sources. This means we need to apply a filter to the chart to only include referrals. To do this, let's scroll to the bottom of the Setup column. And let's click Add a filter. Let's name the filter Referrals Only. Let's leave the filter as an Include filter. Then we need to select a field. Let's search for and select Session Medium. Then let's choose Equal To and enter Referral as the value. Now let's click Save. That's it. We can see our table is updated to only include referral traffic. Now we're going to copy our original table again. We are going to use this table to present the custom campaigns we are tracking in Google Analytics. For example, our email campaigns and other custom inbound marketing. To do this, we are going to change the dimension. Let's select Session Default Channel Grouping and change this to Session Campaign. Now we can see there are a number of rows that aren't for our custom campaigns. We can see a row for organic, a row for direct, a row for referral, and one for not set. So we need to create another filter to remove these rows from the chart. Let's scroll to the bottom of the Setup tab and click Add a filter. We can see the filter we just created, but we need to create a new one, so let's select Create a filter at the bottom. Let's name the filter Custom Campaigns Only. And let's change Include to Exclude. Now we need to search for Session Campaign. Then select Regular Expression Match. Now I want you to enter carrot backslash opening bracket opening bracket organic pipe direct pipe referral pipe not set, closing bracket, backslash, closing bracket, dollar sign. This will match any campaigns with a value of organic, direct referral or not set inside brackets. You might need to customise this regular expression depending on what you find in your GA4 reports, so feel free to add additional values if needed. I've included the regular expression I've used in the description below this video. OK, now let's click Save. 
That's it, we can see our table as updated and the rows showing organic direct referral and not set traffic have been removed. Let's copy our original table again. We're going to use this table to present the landing pages on our website. This will show us the pages people see first when they travel to our website. To do this, we need to change the dimension. Let's select Session Default Channel Grouping and let's search for Landing Page. The landing page dimension from GA4 isn't currently available in Looker Studio, so I'm going to show you how to create a filter to only include your landing pages. So instead of landing pages, let's search for and select Page Path. The table now includes all of the pages on our website, but this doesn't mean people have landed on these pages, so let's scroll down and add a filter. Now let's click Create a Filter at the bottom. Let's name the filter Landing Pages Only. Let's leave Include selected and let's search for and select Event Name. Then let's select Equal To and enter Session underscore Start as the value. This means we'll only be including pages where the Session Start event occurred, so this lets us view the first page people viewed in a session. I imagine Google will add the landing page dimension to Looker Studio soon, but this shows you how you can do it until the dimension is added. Now let's click Save. That's it, we can see the table now shows us the landing pages people have viewed on the website. And we could customise this further by adding a second dimension or adjusting the metrics, but I'm going to leave this chart as it is. Now let's add one more visualisation to our report. I want to add a stacked bar chart that shows the overall trend for our top 5 marketing channels. To do this, let's select Add a Chart and choose the Stacked Column Chart option. And let's resize the chart. We can see that the chart is showing us the different marketing channels, but I want to see the trend for the date range, so we will need to modify the chart. Let's start by changing the dimension from Session Default Channel Grouping to Date. Now we can see that the dates aren't in order, so let's change the sort from Sessions and change this to Date. And then we need to select Ascending. OK, so now we can see the dates in order, but I want to view more days, so let's select the Style tab and change the number of bars from 10 to 28. Now the chart includes a lot of information, and I only want to see the top 5 marketing channels. So let's change the series from 10 to 5. Finally, we need to change the dimension because the chart is showing us custom campaigns and I want to see marketing channels. To do this, let's select the Setup tab and change the breakdown dimension from Session Campaign to Session Default Channel Grouping. That's it, we can now see the overall trend for our top 5 marketing channels and a daily breakdown. Before we wrap up, I want to show you two more things as you begin using Looker Studio. First, you can adjust the names of dimensions and metrics used in your reports. To do this, we need to select a chart. Let's select the chart we created for referrals. You can then hover over the metric or dimension you want to rename and click the Edit icon. I can now rename the dimension. Let's name this one Referrals. And let's also repeat this for the Landing Pages table. Let's change Page Path to Landing Pages. OK, finally, let's take a look at the default themes available in Looker Studio. These allow you to quickly change the style of your report or dashboard. To change the theme, let's click Theme and Layout. We can now see the default themes that are available. This is a quick way to adjust the overall style of your reports.
we've now created a Looker Studio dashboard to understand how people are finding our website using data from Google Analytics. I recommend taking some time to explore the different visualization options you can use in your reports and dashboards. And to learn even more about Looker Studio, take a moment to check out the extra resources in the description below this video. What dashboards and reports are you going to create in Looker Studio? I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, please like it so I know to make more videos like this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.